Welcome to my presentation, which has been scheduled for about 45 minutes. And I would like to devote this time to tell you a few words about some of the new features of Blender 2.67. And I will focus on the, one, on the ones related to Note Editor. And in particular, I will tell you uh, what is the new way of editing the node groups. And I will present you the node efficiency tools, which is the add-on that I started developing at the beginning of December last year, and now it's included in Blender, although in Blender 2.67b it doesn't work, but I will tell you why. Uh, now it's included in Blender, and uh, it's just a set of tools that can speed up the process of creating our setups of nodes. So that's the scope of my presentation, so let me begin. Blender 2.67 was released at the beginning of May, but right now we have Blender 2.67b, a and B releases were just the bug fix releases, so they were supposed to fix several bugs. No new things have been added. Uh, several bug have been, bugs have been fixed, and one was introduced by me. So, well, well let's forget about it uh, at the moment. Uh, so, before, I <clears throat> before I'm going to start to talk about Node Editor, let me simply mention some new features that we have in Blender 2.67. One of them is uh, the freestyle module. Everybody knows that. This is the addition to render engine that allows us to create non-realistic cartoony look of our images. And freestyle is not a new thing. It's been with us for ages. But now in Blender 2.67, it is built in, which means that in order to use it, we don't have to download or install anything additional. So this is freestyle. And the second thing, finally, we have subsurface scattering in cycles. So uh, it's worth mentioning, however, that this is not ready yet. It's, it has its limitation. It still doesn't work with GPU rendering. But let's simply be happy that we finally have it. OK, so now let's talk about nodes. What are the nodes? What is Node Editor? Just a few words of introduction for those who have absolutely no idea what all this is. So those are the nodes, and this is the Node Editor. Those little thingies are the nodes, and this macaroni are the links between them. And the nodes can represent various things. Like here, we are in compositing nodes, which means that we are working on the images. And those images can be renders that are rendered in Blender, or they can be the images that come from outside Blender. So for example, here, the, this is one of the input nodes. Here we have some input node. And those nodes represent the images. Everything that goes from here, this is the image, this is the image, those are all the images. And they are passed through several other nodes, and those other nodes are the filters, the effects, so we are simply doing something with those images. We can change several parameters inside those filters, those effects. The images can be mixed, and they are mixed using the mix nodes. Those mix nodes can have several blend types. So this is how we are working on the images. And then the result of all of those operations is linked to the output nodes that allow us to render or simply to view what we are doing. So this is the node editor, and this is how it's used to work on the images. But we can as well do various other things with the nodes. We can, for example, create materials using them. And here we have the material nodes. I have switched to the material nodes. And here I am creating the cycles material. This one is pretty simple. Because as you can see, we have just one node that is linked to another, another node. This one is the material output. And here we have just the diffuse shader, which is directly linked to this material output. But we can also, of course, add several other shaders like glossy, glass, translucent, transparent, subsurface scattering, ambient occlusion, whatever we like. We can change the parameters of those shaders. We can mix them. We can change the colors of them. We can add textures to them. We can add bump maps, normal maps, whatever we like. So 
This is the node editor in general. This is the, those are the pur purposes of uh, the node editor. So now after this introduction, everybody here in this room is an expert in the field of node editor. So now I can talk to you like an expert to the experts. So what changed in this field in Blender 2.67? Well, there are few little features, the ones that uh, Sebastian mentioned and Francesco mentioned. So like the find function, for example. And yeah, Francesco told about the, the uh, find function. So we can simply hit control F and we can simply find the node that we are looking for. Let's say that we are creating something more complicated. So in this case, I can find some node, right? And if I can. Whatever. <laughs> okay, but there is a find function. And I wanted to mention one uh, issue with this because uh, we, the experts, we, everybody knows that Control F, keyboard shortcut, was responsible in the previous versions of Blender. It was responsible for something completely different. When we hit Control F, new link was added that replaced the previously existing link. So now this behavior have, uh, has been remapped to a new keyboard shortcut, which is Shift F. And this is something that we simply need to remember. So uh, let me demonstrate what I mean. But I will do it, I will try to do it like this without this microphone. Okay, so here, for example, we have two nodes that are linked together. Let me select one of them and duplicate it, right? And now I will shift select, I will, I will select this one and this one, and I would like to make the link between those nodes that will replace the existing link. So what I do, I simply hit Control F. This is the power of getting used to something. I hit Shift F, and this way uh, the new link has been created and the old one has been, uh, has been removed. So this is the issue about the uh, find function. And of course, we have this little uh, thing, the menu in a toolbar. This is a new thing. But this is something we were discussing about it with Sebastian yesterday, that everything is pretty fine in this menu, because this is just an add menu, something that we used to have under, and we still have it, under the keyboard shortcut Shift A. So this is the standard way of adding the nodes. I hit Shift A, and here I select the node that I want to add, and it's added, right? So this is the node, and I can, now I can do it a different way. I can click this button and drag the node here. But it would be awesome if we had, because this is just a copy of this menu. So everything is categorized exactly the same as here. But I am missing one little, little thing. I would want to have my own, for example, my own sub-menu here, where I could place my uh, frequently used nodes or something. It is missing. I hope that it will be added in some time. So those are the little features. Let me now show you the new way of working with node groups. We, the experts, exactly know that nodes can be grouped, right? So first, let me show you how it used to. <laughs> OK. First let, first, let me show you how it used to work in Blender 2.66. So I have switched to Blender 2.66, and now I will select some of the nodes and hit Control G and this way I am creating the new group. I have created the group that consists of all of those nodes. And here this group is open for editing right now. Okay? I can collapse this group so I can hit Tab and this way it's collapsed and it looks as if it was just one single regular node. Let me open it again by hitting Tab, and here I can do various things. I can add new nodes, I can create new links, and so on, right? And here we can see clearly that we have the right panel and the left panel. Those panels are responsible for the inputs and outputs of the groups. So I can, for example, add another additional input. So I simply drag the link over here, and this way, I have created the new input of the group. When I collapse it, here I have this additional input, right? And I can do, of course, exactly the same with the outputs. 
And here I can control those inputs and outputs. I can change the names of them. Blubbly, right? I can change the order of them. I can move this down in the stack, down, and this is how it reflects when the group is collapsed. So this is the way of editing the group that we used to have in Blender 2.66. Let me now switch to Blender 2.67 and let, let me do exactly the same thing. So I will select several nodes, Control G, and I have created the group of nodes. Let me collapse it. When I collapse it, everything looks exactly the same as this previous version of Blender. But when the group is open for editing, you will see the difference. Now those panels responsible for the inputs and outputs of the group are gone. Now we are controlling the inputs and outputs through the nodes. Here we have the nodes for the inputs and here we have the nodes for the outputs. In order to add the new output, I simply drag the link over here to this empty socket and this way the new output has been created. And I can do exactly the same with the inputs. So here I drag something here, new input has been created. But, well, how do I control it? How do I change the order? How do I change the names, the default values? Now we have to use the properties panel for this. So let me hit N, so this way I revealed the properties panel. And here I have the section that is responsible for the inputs and outputs. So I can select one of the inputs and here I can change the name of it to my favorite Blubbly. In order to change the order here, I use those arrows. So I select the input and move it down in stack or up in stack. I can change the default value of this uh, input. Right now it is just a white color and I can change it to something else. So this is the way of editing the node groups right now. I can also remove the input or output. I can click this and it's gone, right? Okay, and now let me show you something that was impossible in Blender 2.66 and now it is possible. Let me split this window. Of course, splitting the windows was possible. But as you can see, now here I have this group open for editing and here it is collapsed. So I can at the same time edit the main tree and at the same time edit the group, okay? And it was impossible in Blender 2.66. Now I can have several various groups open so I can edit several groups at the same time. And this is, this is really cool. And just for the demonstration, let me here, split this window and once I collapse the group in one of the windows it collapses everywhere so it's impossible to edit several groups at the same time it was impossible now it is possible okay so this is about the groups I thought that we have an issue here with the uh, notes with those notes inputs and outputs but we don't have it so let me just simply forget about it okay so those are the cool things about the the groups let me now show you uh, demonstrate the add-on the add-on notes efficiency tools uh, so this is the add-on it is included in blender but in order to be able to use it we have to activate it because most of the add-ons by default are not active so in order to activate the add-on I go to file user preferences and here I select the add-on stop and I begin to search for nodes efficiency tools and I activate it yeah and we have a problem because I made a terrible mistake. This is Blender 2.6.7b and I introduced a bug which yeah which caused uh, this add-on that it is impossible to, 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 to activate it. We have to fix something in order to be able to use it. Well but I will show you how to do it. Here I have uh, when I open this uh, this panel I have the path to the script that is responsible for this, okay? And here's the full path. And I can edit this script. Okay, let me do it. I will here open the text editor. And, uh, well, I can, of course, memorize this path. I remember this path, but everybody will open, we, you will open your computer and you will see this path. The point is that I have to open this file here. So I will open it. And I remember that it's somewhere here, 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 
here, here, and here it is. Uh, no? Uh, it was there, right? Scripts, add-ons. Mm, yeah, here it is, okay. Let me open this. Okay, I don't want you to mess with this. I, I, I will not ask you to write any line of the code. But in order to be able to use this add-on in Blender 2.67b, we have to use the latest, um, the latest version of it that is available in the trunk. Okay, so let's find it. And this is not that difficult. Here we have the button documentation. We can click it and we will be redirected to the wiki page that explains the node sufficiency tools. And here we have, <coughs> here we have the link to this add-on, to this Python script. So let me click it. Of course, yeah, right. And here it is. I can now hit Control A to select everything. Control C to copy all of this text. And here in Blender, let me simply Control A to select all of this text, delete it, Control V, and I have pasted the text from the web browser, right? And now I have to save this file. Text, save. Okay. And it should work. I hope so. Now, F8 to refresh everything, and let's try to activate it. Maybe it will work. Bam, it's active. Whew. Okay. It will not, <laughs> okay. And uh, this is, this was my mistake, really. I messed up something uh, in, uh, so. Sorry for that. In Blender 2.6.8, uh, it will be gone. This problem will be gone. But now, we have node sufficiency tools. Let me show you what it's all about. So, let me hit N. Now, there are several operations that are, by its nature, very simple, but they are not that simple because of the number of steps that we have to take in order to perform this action. And <clears throat> this add-on is uh, designed to, is the answer to some of, of such, uh, such situations. Okay, the add-on is right now active. It has several features. It has uh, several tools inside it. And we have three ways of accessing all of those tools. The first one is the properties panel. So here we have the panel responsible for efficiency tools, right? So here we can access all of the tools from this uh, add-on. The, uh, the second way of accessing uh, those uh, things is because sometimes we don't want to have this panel open, is by hitting control space keyboard shortcut. And this is the copy of this menu that I showed you. But the most efficient way of accessing the tools is by using their individual keyboard shortcuts. So let me show you one situation. Here we have several nodes, right? They represent some images. And the, uh, those images, let's say that this one represents the combined diffuse passes, this one combined glossy passes, those passes come from Cycles Render Engine, this one is responsible for transmission, this is emission and environment. The, there is some combination that created this one, that created this one, and so on. And the last thing left to do is simply to add all of those images together. What do I mean by saying add? I want to mix them using the add blend type. I want to take all of the values of the colors of those images and simply add them together. So what is the way of adding the images in Blender? We have to add the color mix node, right? And here we have to change the blend type to add. And now I take the first image and plug it here. I take the second image and plug it here. I take the third image and plug it, whoops. Okay, so this node has only two inputs. Fine, but that's not a problem. Let me duplicate this node and connect those two and now take this one and this one and connect them. And here I have the sum of those three images, okay? Two more left, okay. So let me duplicate this one again, link this one, link this one, 
Okay, one more left. So let me duplicate this one, connect this one, connect this one. I, I am using F, okay? Connect this one. And here I have the sum of all of those five images. Okay, it was not that difficult, but how many step, steps did I have to take? It's pain in the, it's pain, okay? So let's forget about it. Right now we have node sufficiency tools. So the last thing left to do is to add all of those images together. So let me simply uh, select them and hit Control plus and they are added. So that's, that's what it's all about, right? Now, of course, adding the images is not the only operation that we can, that we can do. We sometimes want to multiply the images together. So we simply hit control asterisk. Asterisk is the universal sign for multiplying. So I have multiplied all of, all of those, <coughs> those images. I can, of course, I can, for example, subtract control minus. I can, I can divide control slash. And this is, those images are divided, right? And Sometimes I want to make the simple mix, okay? Mix, no blend type, zero blend type, control zero. And this is a simple mix of all of the selected nodes, okay? Now, but, well, I have mixed all of those images, but I know that it's a mistake. I wanted, I should have added them, but I have used the mix, okay? So now I would like to be able to change this blend type. I would like to alter the blend type. I stress the word alter because I use the old key. So, old plus, and I have the add blend type. Old minus, old slash, old asterisk. Old slash, old asterisk, okay. Old slash, old asterisk, yeah. Old zero, old plus. So this way I am changing the blend types of all of the selected mix nodes. Mix nodes have also something, this is the factor, okay? So I can use, right now I am using the 100%, I use the factor of one, but I, sometimes I want to lower this or make it higher, so I can do it here. I can also use the keyboard shortcut for this, Alt left arrow, and I am decreasing the factor, Alt right arrow, I am increasing it. If I want to be more precise, I hit Alt shift left arrow, Alt shift right arrow, okay? So this is, Pretty cool, I think. Uh, now, of course, uh, I'm seeing that nobody takes notes, and this is great. Uh, I appreciate this. Uh, we can also always look at the documentation, so this is no use uh, to try to memorize all of those keyboard shortcuts. Now, let me show you some other situation. Let me add the converter, for example, math node. And let's duplicate it, let's duplicate it again. Those nodes are a li little bit different than those nodes. As you can see, the outputs of those nodes are yellow. The outputs of those nodes are gray. What does it mean? Yellow outputs mean, mean that th those are the images, which means that this is a combination of four channels, red channel, green channel, blue channel, and the alpha channel. And here we have the gray output, which means that it's just a value. It can be, for example, just the red channel, just the green channel, or any value. This is not the combination of four channels, but it is just one channel. Let me now select two such nodes and hit Control plus. They also have been added, but as you can see, different node has been used. Right now, math node is used, and here the mix node is used. And this is logical to add uh, the values using the math nodes in, instead of using the mix nodes. But sometimes, however, we would anyway want to use the mix node in this situation. We have the gray outputs, but we would want to use the mix nodes. So in such case, it is pretty simple because we can use one of the tools of node sufficiency tools. We can swap the nodes. We can change the node to something else. So I will hit Shift S and I will change this node to mix node. Shift S, change it back to math node. I can, of course, do it for multiple nodes. So now I will add those ones. Shift S, change to mix nodes. Okay. Shift S, change them back to math nodes. Okay. So this is 
this is it. Now we know how to uh, how to mix uh, the notes, how to how to merge the notes, how to mix them, how to uh, use the math notes for, for for them. Let me switch to shaders. And here, I am creating the shader, and this is a pretty simple material, just a diffuse shader. Let's imagine that I want to create the mixture out of the diffuse shader and the glossy shader, and I would like to mix those shaders using let's say 0 0.6 factor, okay? So now with node sufficiency tools, I can do something like this. This diffuse shader has some color, and this is this color. So right now I would do this, Shift D to duplicate this node, Shift S to swap it and mix, change shaders and change it to glossy shader, select those two, Control zero to mix them, and now I would like to use the 0 0.6 factor, so Alt, right arrow, and here we go. So, well, I can, uh, let's say that I want to, instead of mixing those, uh, those uh, shaders, I would like to add them. So I will swap this and change it to add shader, okay? And again, mix shader. Oh. Okay, great. Now, let me show you something, something, something else. Let's imagine that um, I would like to mix the render passes that come from Cycles render engine. Here are the passes. And as you can see, the passes are here we have the passes for diffuse, here glossy, here transmission, and here we have emission and environment. The way of combining the render passes, the cycles render passes to recreate our final image is very well described in the Blender's wiki. But I will just quickly uh, tell you how to do it. Diffuse, glossy, and transmission, all of them have three components, direct, indirect, and color. Direct is the light that influences the surface. That the, this is the light that comes directly from the light source, right? and hits our surface. Indirect light is the light that doesn't directly hit the, our surface, but bounces off other surfaces, and it's changed, and then hits our surface. So this is the indirect. And color is the color of the surface. In this case, we are talking about only about the diffuse components. And the same goes for glossy and for transmission. Okay? The way of combining those things together is first we have to take all of the light and simply add it up. So I take the direct plus indirect. And then in order to have the influence of the, uh, of the color, I multiply the sum by this color. Okay? So this way I have the combined diffuse components. I do the same with the glossy, I do the same with the transmission. And in order to recreate the final image, I take diffuse, glossy and transmission and then add an emission and environment to this. Okay? So this is the way of doing it. Now, let me do it using node sufficiency tools. Here I have the input render layers and here I have the access to all of those passes. But I showed you that it's pretty easy to add images or to merge, imi to merge images, to multiply them, mix them, uh, when they are represented by individual nodes. In this case, it's not that simple because all of them come from one single node. So I can add the reroutes to all of the outputs. And I, use, uh, I used slash, and here I add reroutes to all of the outputs, okay? So now, all of those images are represented by single nodes. But it's not that easy to determine what they represent, because we don't have any labels, we don't have any names here. So I can Shift C, copy the label from the linked output's name, and this way they have names, okay? Now, there are several things that I don't need at the moment, so let me simply delete those ones. And to keep order, let me take those ones and move them down here. As you can see, this is a weird 
um, behavior when I use the reroutes. Of course, uh, many people like to use the straight lines. I used to like it, but now I, I don't anymore. I don't know why. Uh, so let me select all of those nodes and swap them. Let's, let me change them to switches. They do absolutely nothing, but well, now it looks a little bit nicer. So, as I told you, what I need to do is to diffuse, take diffuse direct plus diffused indirect and times diffuse color. Glossy direct plus glossy indirect times glossy color. Transmission direct plus transmission indirect times transmission color. And then I take those sums and select also those ones and add them and I am done. So that's it. Okay. Uh, what else? Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you about this is I use the workflow that um, when I'm working, I always, I always uh, try to, uh, I separate the render from compositing. So I tend to render everything to multi-layer open EXR files. Those are the files that can store all of the information about all of the passes. So I have one single file, but it contains all of those images inside one file. So here I have, the, I have such render. So let me simply take it. It's here. And let's say that I did the first composite, the trial composite. <coughs> I added several nodes here and so on. And I used this input render layers. Right? And okay, and I and I think that I like it. I think that I like it and I would like to use this initial composite as a starting point. So what I would like to do, I would like to relink all of this setup to this pre rendered image, right? So well, how would I do this? And let's imagine that I don't have those nodes. I mean not like this. Let me delete those ones. And let's say that I also have something like this, like this. I am making some mess here. Okay? Several links, messy, right? And now let's imagine that I would like to relink all of those inputs here. Well, not that easy, right? So now, with node sufficiency tools, I would do this. First of all, I have selected this input render layers. I hit slash, and I will add reroutes to all of the linked outputs. This is what happened, right? And now, I will name them. Control uh, Shift C, copy label from linked outputs name. And now, I have them all selected. I will Shift select this one and hit shift semicolon and it's done and it's almost done ah it's it's done because uh, in this image i don't have emit and environment this is why it didn't relink okay i will swap those nodes to switches in order for you to see it better okay so i have simply relinked those now let's say that those are not needed. Okay. Bam. Shift semicolon. Bam. Shift semicolon. Easy. Okay. So that would be it. Uh, I'm really sorry for the mistake that I made in Blender 2.67b. <laughs> In the trunk, if somebody is using the latest releases that, uh, that uh, are downloaded from graphical.org or from builderblender.org, uh, you won't face the problem, the issue that I showed you at the beginning, right? So, well, sorry for that. But if you have any, th those were, of course, not all of the options of node sufficiency tools. I encourage you to v visit the wiki page. The link to it is here. Okay, wiki page, and here it is. Here I have the video tutorial embedded, and it, uh, it explains everything. Uh, if you have any 
suggestions and so on. I am really open to uh, to, to to users' uh, input. So uh, just 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 tell me. Maybe not uh, uh, necessarily now, but anyway, that's all from from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bartek. Some comments or questions? Okay. Oh, thanks. I have often the problem that I would like to uh, create a, a single pin to be used as some kind of a multiplication uh, starting point. You have shown us how this works, but I have... I have single pin? Yeah, you, you just uh, took an output somewhere, and from this output you could uh, then uh, start several uh, connections. So how do you make it? Uh, you mean this uh, reroute? Like, uh, okay, let me maybe... You mean like this? Yes. How yes? is it working? Yeah. Something like this? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly okay, what so I here what I did, I simply shift left drag. Okay, and now if I want to do it uh, through the keyboard shortcut uh, with node sufficiency tools, I can do it by hitting slash. And here I can choose the option, for example, to I can add them to all of the outputs of the selected nodes. Okay, so so that's that's the way. This is what you were asking for, right? Okay. Yeah. Jakieś pytanie, proszę bardzo, ostatnia szansa. Okej, okay, jest odważny. Um, chciałem zapytać właśnie po polsku. E, czy ten dodatek może, nie wiem, on jest naprawdę fajny, czy zostanie kiedyś zaimplementowany do Blendera bez, bez potrzeby dodawania tego z listy dodatków? jakby? Jest zaimplementowany do Blendera. W sensie, no nie z listy dodatków, tylko jak już, żeby był już na stałe. Jakby A czegoś Blender. takiego nie ma. Takich rzeczy się, takie rzeczy się nie dzieją. Znaczy, w zasadzie wiele opcji funkcjonuje jako addony. Przecież de facto nawet Cycles Render Engine to jest addon. No tak. Który akurat, y, znaczy jedyna różnica między, między znaczy nie, niektóre adony są y, z defaultu włączone, a niektóre nie. Tak naprawdę to, ta cała operacja, którą ja pokazałem na samym początku, to niestety y, to jest tylko rzecz, która się dzieje w Blenderze 267B. Jeżeli ktoś używa Blendera 267A, to y, tak naprawdę 260, tak, 267A, to tak naprawdę tego problemu nie ma. E, jak ktoś używa zupełnie najnowszego y, buildu, powiedzmy z Graphical Org czy coś takiego, to tego problemu nie ma. Po prostu ten dodatek jest. Jedyne, co musimy zrobić, to pójść do y, User Preferences i tam w addons aktywować go. Koniec, nic więcej nie trzeba robić. On jest wbudowany, nic nie trzeba ściągać. To jest tylko to, co ja pokazałem. To tylko chodzi o to, że to jest naprawienie błędu, który ja popełniłem. I niestety właśnie to się, tak się stało, że w wersji 267b jest to skopane. Także bardziej, bardziej wbudowane w Blendera już to nie będzie nigdy. To już jest najbardziej jak może być. No to jedyne, ale to nie jest żaden problem, bo uruchamiamy sobie, zaznaczamy, że on jest aktywny, Ctrl U, dziękuję i mamy. Safe user settings. Już jest zachowane. Ja tak u siebie mam. Czy jest to problem licencji? Jakiej licencji? Nie. A sko? Myślę, że... Nie, 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 nie. To jest twoje imię, myślę, a... Nie, 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 to nie o to chodzi. To jest problem filozofii, filozofii developmentu Blendera. To chodzi o to, że wiele rzeczy, jednak, jednak to jest coś takiego, że ja to napisałem jako dodatek, to jest włączone do Blendera, natomiast nie może być takiej sytuacji, że przez jakiś głupi błąd, na przykład mój, który ja popełniłem, cały Blender nie działa. Więc tutaj to ja popełniłem błąd i co się stało? Tylko mój dodatek nie działa, prawda? A cały Blender działa i nikt nie płacze, tylko ja. <grym> Dziękuję. Jakieś następne pytanie? Okej, okay, to w takim razie bardzo dziękujemy. Bartku, świetny wykład, dziękuję. dziękuję.